Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael O'Malley here with an update on the tropical weather situation regarding Invest Area 91L potentially could become Tropical Storm Danielle. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this evening as the sun begins to set, we notice that this broad area of disturbance right now in the tropical central tropical Atlantic is being designated as Invest Area 91L, somewhere located about here. This tropical disturbance is expected to be moving towards the northwest over the next several days and could become Tropical Storm Danielle as it approaches the Leeward Islands to the north of the island chain. But look here at the visible satellite imagery from this evening. We notice that uh, we have a few things occurring this evening. A broad area of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity stretching around from about 12 degrees north all the way up to about 18 north. And so this really isn't consolidating much at all today, and it's going to take some time before this actually begins to form into anything substantial. The 2 p.m. tropical weather outlook uh, does have this system moving towards the northwest over the next several days and could end up recurving um, away from the mainland United States, which would certainly be some good news. But there is some increasing potential for impacts to Bermuda over the next about uh, five to seven days. And we're going to talk about all of that here in a second. Now, if we look at how strong this system is expected to get, at least in the next about five days, kind of the short to medium range. Uh, right now, this is the H4 forecast, the 12Z run, valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We're looking at the upper level wind environment at this point. And we notice that there's not really much in, in the way of favorability right now because we've got this big upper level low here, this tropical upper tropospheric trough that is digging in across the subtropical Atlantic at this point, and that is inducing a lot of vertical shear upon the storm right now, not really allowing for much in the way of favorable conditions. Um, however, that does begin to change here. This is by Wednesday. This begins to change. However, the moisture field at this time is still very limited. We have all of this dry air around, uh, but it is starting to kind of try to work itself out. But this dry air is going to really be the main hindering factor and uh, along with the shear but both of these combined are going to be hindering factors over the next several days not really allowing for much in the way of significant organization however this begins to change here on the forecast by thursday evening we have a broad upper level anti-cyclone forming uh kind of a little bit to the south and east of uh, 91l's uh, position at this time according to the forecast here and we're starting to see this upper level low begin to be pinched off. And this allows the outflow to expand and moisture to be, uh, the, the environment to be uh, moistened from below. And this is one of the main factors that allows for some intensification as we progress through the next several days. And on the H4 forecast, this does become a tropical depression and eventually a tropical storm as it uh, approaches the island chain about 160 nautical miles to the north and east of the island chain at this point certainly some good news and then eventually this does become a hurricane as it is beginning to move towards the northwest here on saturday now this is just the uh, h4 forecast if we look at the uh, long range uh, hmon models this is in disagreement um, its position is roughly the same um, within about 50 miles or so, but the intensity much weaker HMON here. And some of the um, products here, especially from the uh, HAFS uh, model, this is experimental products here by uh, NOAA. Uh, but generally speaking, they are also kind of in agreement with a weaker low end solution. That's probably what we're going to be dealing with. And we notice that there will be some dry, stable air around. Now, we do have a reconnaissance aircraft that is currently surveying this system right now, an eight-hour research mission, and this data will be assimilated into the forecast models overnight, likely will be processed into the 6E runs here. So by tomorrow morning, we should have at least a little bit better of an idea of what's going on. Now, in terms of the long-range uh, future here of 91L, it's going to be very uncertain here. If we look here at the, the EPS forecast, the European Ensembles, we're looking at the 500 millibar geopotential heights here, and we're really just looking to see if there's any major pattern shifts over the next several days that's going to change the track forecast. And indeed there will be, but it's very complicated. Now, right now we've got this big ridge of high pressure over Newfoundland and the Canadian Maritimes. 
but an approaching trough from the west will be swinging in eastward, eroding that ridge. And our system's going to be mainly forced towards the northwest because there's general weakness across this area. So our system's going to be forced northwest over the next few days. But we notice how we've got this trough here that's just basically digging in and that never really goes away. We can see that it tries to, to um, the, the ridge tries to build back in, but we got another trough that's kind of swinging in, eroding that ridge even further. Uh, but the track forecast here is a little bit more uncertain than that. If we jump up to the 200 millibar wind here at this time, we notice that this is day five. We've got an upper level low here sitting over portions of the Caribbean and the assumed position of 91L somewhere within here at this particular time moving towards the northwest. Now, this forecast is going to change because what we notice is that this upper level low actually then retrogrades here. And overall, we've got a pattern where if we actually look here at the European, uh, the operational forecast, this upper level low sitting right here isn't particularly favorable. And because it's inducing a little bit of shear upon our system at this point, and this is beginning to move towards the northwest, but this upper level low is trying to also pivot this towards the west. And so we've got competing steering influences here, which actually on the European forecast begins to slow the system down. But then we've got this approaching trough, which is also shearing uh, out the system. So it's entirely possible that a solution like the European uh, operational does happen but it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this tries to pivot it closer to the southeast U.S. and the Bahamas or whether or not this continues on its track out to sea here as it uh, moves around that subtropical ridge. Now, if we look here at the tropical cyclone impact risk, again, for the islands especially, there is no threat. And I'm not really even inclined to increase any risk proportion of the Bahamas. It's just so far out in time and there's so much uncertainty at this point that we just don't really know. So no impacts expected, at least at this time. Now, once we get into the long range, again, there's going to be some uncertainty here. Most of the European ensemble forecast does try to take this system away, but it is very slow. This is our 216 here. And so this is by um, the 12th of, the, I'm sorry, no, this is the 7th of September at eight in the morning. And we notice that again, not many model members right now suggesting anything for portions of the Bahamas, but there are a few. Most notably, there are uh, several members in here that are also a lot slower and further west here, closer to the Bahamas. And then we've kind of got this camp here where we've got models that are beginning to turn this out to sea as it progresses around that subtropical ridge. So there's a wide range of uncertainties here. Again, the United States-based impacts are beginning to lessen, but I'm not so inclined to say that it's necessarily off the table, at least for the time being, because there's a lot of uncertainty and some of these members are a little uncomfortably close to make that final determination. So a lot is going to matter on the initial spread here because we notice that there's an initial kind of north-northwest motion here, and that tries to keep a lot of the members away from portions of land. But that initial bend, we could see another bend back towards the west here, depending on the placement of an upper level low suggested to be over the Caribbean over the next few days. So we'll continue to monitor the progress of that. But again, no impacts, at least uh, to portions of the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico is to be expected at this time. No impacts there. All right. That being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I'm Mike Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.